Okay, so hi everybody. My name is Zero, and this is another Ginkgo tutorial. Um, in this tutorial, we'll be showing you how to texture, well, how to make a skin texture for the Snaggletooth Cobalt. Now, we did a Snaggy tutorial earlier in the series, and that was just to show you how to make clothes and texture those clothes. So it's only natural that we move on to the next stage, and that's how to make a custom skin texture for your Snaggle. Everything that I use inside the tutorial will be available to download down in the description box. So if you'd like to follow along, make sure you download the care package. Alright, well, I guess you hear the buzzer. I'm sorry, it's my fan. It's really hot down here, and I really need it on. So please bear with the sound. Alright, so now let's say you open up the... Well, let's dive into the tutorial now. Um... First thing you want to do is open up the blend file. When you open it, you'll see that it's just a bunch of bones here. This was done on purpose so that you can build up your snaggle the way you want it. What I mean by that is you get to choose which snaggle tooth you're using the texture to match your avatar the best. You'll see on the side here in the group, what are those things called? Uh, group panel. There's a list of snaggles, avatars, and parts that make up um, this kit. It starts with the snaggle's chest size going from zero, which is the boy size, the boy chest, all the way up to huge, which is the fuzz butt floaties um, add-on. All of the busts and snaggles use the same textures, so you don't have to worry about making a texture for each and every size. So just pick the one that you like the most and then work on that one. I like to use the chest size 3 because I think that's a nice medium point between all the um, bust sizes. Plus, you know, I'm a girl, so of course I'm not going to use the boy side. But then again, flat chested girls are kind of cute. So anyway, I think I'll just, it's personal opinion, uh, personal preference, and I'm just going to stick with chest size number 3. Um, you can also choose to add the tail if you want to. Um, the clean tail is the default tail, and the dirty tail is the donut tail. If you have a snaggle avatar, you know which one that is. So if you would prefer to texture the donut snaggy, and then you can use that one. Uh, if you don't, then you can just, you know, um, not use that. I'm going to stick with the clean one and use the default tail. You can do the same thing if you want to add the lady bits. Just choose the vagina tab and you should be able to, um, you know, have it added here as well. I don't think I'm going to use that one either. I think I'm just going to use this as a plain kind of PG-ish snaggle um, with nipples. <laughs> um, so I'm going to use a sort of PG-13 version of the snaggle. With our snaggle tooth built, it's worth noticing, noting that the snaggle is currently mirrored. And this was done on purpose by the creator to make it guess, easier to model and paint with. So that means that whatever we do on one side, it will happen on the other. If you want to see an example of that, we'll just go over into Sculpt Mode real quick and grab the grab. Select the grab and you see whenever I move on this side, um, it happens on that side just you know mirrored the same thing happens with texture so if we were to export this model as is whatever we draw on this side will show up on that side um, mirrored perfectly and that would be good for some people because you know it makes things easier for people like me who are blind and want everything symmetrical but there are some designs that call from asymmetrical design and for that we're going to have to create a whole new dummy um, for the asymmetrical purpose, well the purpose of being asymmetrical. I'm going to first work on the um, symmetrical one because you know it's here first and what we're going to do is prepare our symmetrical model for painting. So I'm going to get out of sculpt mode and go back into object mode and click on the body. Then we're going to go over here to the tabs and I'm going to go into material tab. And that's the little circle with the kind of check report inside of it. So we're gonna check that. And you see that the snaggle already has a few materials assigned to it. 
I'm not particularly fond of the material slot here. In fact, I'm going to do the opposite and just remove this material as well as the three blank ones, leaving just the eyelashes and the eyeball. Now we're going to create a whole new texture, um, a new material. So I'm just going to new and new plus and then new. And then I'm going to name this um, main body and hit enter. Now we have a new material created. We have to assign it to the snaggle. So I'm just going to click on the body, press tab. And I found that it's faster just to press uh, A and select everything and then assign it to the new material. We're going to go down here to diffuse and then make everything red, magenta, yeah, magenta. So that we can see what's going to be colored on that, um, what's going to be on that layer. I'm so used to saying layer, that material. I'm saying layers because when we put this in Photoshop, each material is its own layer. So I'm, I'm like layer, layer, layer. One is technically material, material, material. Since we don't want the eyes to be on the same material slot as this, we're going to go back into tab. We're going to select the, well, first we're going to select the body. Then we're going to press tab. And then press A to deselect everything. I'm going to turn the screencast on so you can see what I'm actually pushing. And then I'm going to hover my mouse over the, um, the eyes and press L. And this highlights the eyes. And I'm going to assign those to its own material. And I'm going to do the same thing for the eyelashes. I'm going to press L. And I'm going to create a new layer here. A new layer. And these are going to be the... Let's see this. I'm going to get new lashes. And assign it to that. And we're going to make this black so that we can tell what it is. That's usually how the snaggle is anyway. So we have those selected. The eyelashes. And I'm going to get back here too. So I'm just going to press L and select that. And assign. Make that black. So that that's all. No, it kind of looks like Deadpool. So I don't like that. <laughs> I'm going to change the eyelash color to something else. There we go. Good old default gray. Alright, so we have uh, eyelashes on this own material as well as the eyeball. Whoops, I just did something stupid. There we go. And click that. Right. So we have the eyeball, the eyelashes, and the body on its own material. And I'm going to pick blue so we can see that in effect. Now that pretty much does it for our symmetrical one. We want to actually add the tail as well. So I'm just going to pick that and then pick the main body. So the tail is on the same painting layer. And we can just export it right now. Now we want to prepare our asymmetrical one, our asymmetrical model. You just click on it, hold down shift, and then press D. Right click again, press M and then put it to a new layer. Send it to a new layer. We're going to go over to that new layer. Select the model. I'm going to remove the tail because I don't need it here right now. And move that over there. I'm going to select the model again. I'm going to press the tab and go into edit mode. Then we're going to press this button down here. And it is the limit selection to visible. When you click this, it makes your model kind of like a wireframe but not quite wireframe actually if I was to do this right now I would actually break the model I forgot a step we're going to before we do any of this select the model go over to the um, modifiers tab and apply the mirror so that it's now one single object and not half being mirrored over all right, now we go into t uh, edit mode by pressing tab, and then this box down here to make it into our fake wireframe mode. We want to press the, I like to use the face select, but we can use the edge select for this. We're going to press B and create the band select. Go to the top of the snaggle, find the middle point, click, drag it down, and select one half of the snaggle. It's kind of like why I like to use the face because it grabs a little bit better. If you miss the spot, 
just go back to the middle click and drag it down again and grab the missing parts now that we have the middle part of this like half of the snaggle selected we're going to go back to our material tab and create a new material here and name it other side and hit assign I'm going to give this a color too so you know that it's different from that one so I'm going to make it blue now you're going to look up the snaggle and make sure that it's symmetrical uh, pretty much down the middle as you can see I messed up and I got some blue on the sides that should be red and we can correct that right now so I want you to zoom in to the spot that isn't symmetrical right here and we're going to go back into edit mode I'm going to switch over to face mode, uh, face select and press A and I'm going to deselect the limit selection the visible so that it's solid and not wireframe now here you can see all the individual faces that make up the parts of the snaggle now we're going to select the parts, the triangles, that are blue, that shouldn't be blue. So everything on this side should be pink. So we're just going to click, hold down shift, and select triangles that we want to assign pink. So you're going to get pretty up close and personal with your snaggle at this point. So we're just going to click each to face, and we have a few selected. Go over to the side and assign it to the main body material, and assign. And you're just going to keep doing the same thing all the way down. Selecting all the parts that we want pink. All the way down. And then the sign and make those pink. See? And that corrects the error. We do the same thing under here. Select the names and making that pink as well. So I'm, I'm actually kind of curious about something. So let me one second test this out. Oops. I thought so. That's why I was having problems. So apparently there is another vagina here. We are just going to take that, separate that, and move that pesky thing to a new layer. Oh my gosh, that is so much better. When I was painting before, I kept crashing into it and wondering why it wasn't texturing properly. So I'm gonna get that out of here and we have the proper vagina. The true, the one true vagina. <laughs> Something like that. All right, so as you can see, we're symmetrical. Oops, we were almost symmetrical. And put this here, sign, go up this face, and we're just going to make it all the right color, happy colors. I push snaggle schnoz and make that blue. So there we have it. It's split right up the middle and we're able to work with it now. You can do the same thing for the tail, but um, when it comes to tail painting, I just do like a, uh, let's see. The tail is also mirrored, so we can hit apply and make it one solid thing and then we can just paint it, um, but there's really no point, right? <laughs> So, um, whoops, we lost an eye. Let me go select this eye. Oh, press A and deselect everything. L and select that eye and assign eyeball. There we go. Sure, somebody had said that <laughs> and I didn't hear it. Oh, and the same thing to that eyelid over here. We want to get that back onto the layers it's supposed to be on. What we want to go paint that and then it paints to the wrong part of the body. Now, what we? So, the lashes. Alright, so that's the snaggy. She seems to be all set. Alright, so this is our asymmetrical model. So, you have your asymmetrical one and you have your symmetrical one. 
who has that tricky vagina on here. So let's go and press L, P, remove that. Kind of reminds me of like those old people. Must be my trick vagina acting up. So <laughs> I'm going to move that from there and put it down here because we don't need it. All right. So now it's time to export. Um, so we have our snaggy all ready for exporting. We're going to click it and I'm missing my tail. And I'm going to actually join these two together. Um, trying to be if I want to do it. Uh, yeah, whatever. Alright, so we can join these two together. It's like this. And then we go file, export, Colada day. And let me go out of here into Snaggle Paint. And I'm just going to push Mirror Snaggy. And then scroll down to Operator Presets. And you select SL to open Sim Static. And hit Export. Now we're going to do the same thing for our asymmetrical model. Now I'm going to leave the tail off on this one only because uh, I don't feel like <laughs> messing with the tail right now. So here's one with the tail, one without the tail. So we're just going to select the body and then do the same thing. File, export, um, Colada, default, SL, open sim static, um, the folder you want, and the non merit snaggy and then hit export. And that's pretty much all we need to do with Blender right now. So we can actually close this and go right into Photoshop. So I'm going to pause it and be right back with you. Okay, so we're here in Photoshop. And we have our Snaggle model loaded in. Um, actually, hang on. My, um, what is this thing called? My workspace is a mess. So I'm going to switch it, reset it, and make it look dignified. I'm going to pick 3D because I think that may be a little bit cooler. All right. So when you open up your Photoshop, you're going to switch your workspace over. It might be an essential, it may be in design, but you're going to click this double arrow and you're going to snap it to, sorry I didn't paint it with that one. You're going to snap it to 3D work and that gives it this default 3D workspace. That way we're all on the same page here. Alright, so when you open up your model, you'll see that she's um, going to be topsy-turvy, like so. And your first instinct is to go over here to the... 3D the move tool and move it. Well, when you do that, you actually break the model. So don't do that. If you can see, it treats the model like a 2D image, and that's bad because it's a 3D one, and you don't want uh, 3D acting like 2D in the space and uh, the workspace. So we're gonna just undo that. Press 12 and revert it back to where it was. All right. So don't use this. You'll mess up your project. What you want to do is go down to the bottom and you want to select these. These are the 3D tools. Um, you'll see the 3D object rotate tool and that allows you to rotate your model around freely. Then you'll see the, what is the tool you're supposed to be using? It's the 3D rotate tool, the 3D roll tool. And if you want to zoom in and out, you'll just go to the next button down and click this. And then select the 3D zoom camera tool. And this will allow you to zoom in and zoom out of your um, workspace. The zoom it closer, zoom it out. Those are the three buttons you're really going to be using the most when it comes to 3D painting. Um, another thing that we're going to want to do is once we get it straight in the front view, we're going to want to push this button right here, the little save disk, and save your current view as true front because if you don't and you move it about let's say you turn your model about that way and you want to go back to front uh, Photoshop has its own idea of what front is so this is the front of your model and right of it left of it uh, back um, top bottom so what we want to do is go back to the one that we had which I don't think I saved huh it usually would have saved. <laughs> Alright, so I'm just going to rotate it here and custom view and hit save, save. So now when we do this, it should be able to snap it back to the front. 
So let's zoom it in and get our snaggy into a nice comfortable position. Now I know you want to just dive right in. Hang on. Okay, that was dirt. I was like, why is there a dot on her chest and I didn't paint yet? Well, you always clean your monitor before you do a tutorial. Alright, so like I was saying, um, you have your snaggle and you want to dive into painting. But before we can do that, we have to do some prep work. Um, always prep work before you have fun. It saves you heartache later. Over on the side, if you use Photoshop, you know about layers. And 3D painting uses the same layers as 2D, but kind of slightly differently. Um, each default texture has the, um, the materials that we created in Blender. So you see here is the one that we had before, uh, the main body, and this controls, um, what's it called? This controls the main body material that we created in Blender. So anything painted on this layer will go to everything that was assigned to the main body material. Um, I am going to place in here one of the default files that the creator provided. It's called uh, Skim White, and it's the basic white avatar texture that's in um, the basic white skin texture that's on the snaggles. So I'm going to use the white female. I think this is the one with the tail base, and it, when you put it in, it may come out small. So just grab one of the cubes and stretch it out till it snaps into place. You'll feel it snap and that's how you know it's right. Also there won't be any transparent checkers in it. When you go to place it, like just go to press a, what is this, a paintbrush and click it on the texture. It'll ask you if you want to place the file. Say yes. And then you're going to press the here again and just click OK. So now your texture is ready for Photoshop to start painting on it. But before we paint on it, <laughs> we're going to have to change the size of it. I found that making the texture, uh, changing the size to 2000 by 2000 helps reduce um, artifacts inside your texture. Now you may be wondering where are artifacts and it's when you try to paint and it comes out jaggedy. So I'm going to give an example. So I'm just going to draw this texture on here, uh, this color and I'm gonna make it dissolve. So if you can zoom in a little more, you'll see that it's all broken up along the edge. Now this happens sometimes with textures if the texture is too small for the model. So for safety, I always make it about 2000 by 2000 and if it's still going, you know, jaggy like this, I make it a little bit bigger. But for the snaggles, 2000 by 2000 is fine. So let's just erase this and get rid of it. I'm going to assume that you have some sort of Photoshop knowledge, so I'm not going to explain what layers and all the rest of that stuff is. Although I feel like a butt for not doing it. So layers are basically what they sound like. They are transparent layers that you can paint on top of your base texture, which is what this is. Um, you can interact and paint on top of it without destroying the base texture down here. So new picture here, doing what I want to first texture totally intact. You can change the, how the coloring interacts with the base texture by clicking on the blending options. Right now it's on dissolve but you can see as we shuffle through these it changes the way the um, coloring interacts with the base layer. So you're going to be playing with those a lot to get the effect that you want but for right now I'm just going to stick with multiply because um, maybe I want, is this a good one? Nope. Uh, let's see. I did this a billion or one times and I still don't know what's a good setting to, to make. Alright, I'm going to use, for the sake of this, color. And I'm going to erase all of it. Alright, so now we have a new layer. It's time to dive in and start painting. So maybe I just leave it on multiply for the sake of it. <laughs> All right, small brush and close this. Every time you close this, you'll have to save it. Any changes you make in a 2D layer and you want them to update to the 3D layer, you'll have to save 
otherwise it won't sink and add up. So here we have our snaggle back in the workstation waiting patiently to be painted on and you finally found the color that you want. I'm going to choose a brighter color for this. Like uh, pink. Good pink. This color. Alright. So we have pink and I'm going to start drawing on my snaggle. And as you see, the colors go right onto it. You can start using any other kind of brush. You don't have to just use a plain circle one. You can use brushes. You can use decals. You can use patterns. You can do whatever you want. The sky is the limit. Just paint and have fun. But you may notice that, let me go back to the circle brush. When you start painting on the snaggle, now this is really for the asymmetric one the symmetrical one because you see whatever we did on this side is duplicated over here on that side when you start painting you run into this sort of error right here as you cross the folding line that's what I'm going to call it the symmetrical line where the two parts join you'll see that error here and it's kind of gross and you're like ugh and even if you try to strictly stay on this side and avoid it sometimes you may run, accidentally run over and it causes that a symmetric crash. So how can you avoid this? There is a feature called the cross cutter. Well, I don't think it's called the cross cutter. I've always called it that, but it's really called, let me look and see where it's at. Oh, I had to mess with this. Yes, okay. 3D window, view, 3D. Take it out of here, scroll this down. Hmm. Okay, okay, okay. There it is. These are all the settings for it. Alright, now where would that be? Hang on, I'll be right back. Okay, so this is what I pressed. Um, when you bring out, let me close the 3D menu. So you go to Windows, 3D menu, and you'll see this one right here. It's the button that says filter by whole scene. You're going to check that box. And when you do that, you're going to press cross selection. And what that does is cut your model in half. It doesn't really cut the model in half. Actually, hang on one second. I think I broke it by pressing something. I shouldn't have had it. <gasps> Lordy. Um, Alright, I seem to have broken that. I've never seen that happen before. But I'm going to make sure that doesn't happen again. Um, oh well. Let's just go back to the tutorial. Sorry. So you're going to press this button right here that says filter by whole selection. It's the first button on the 3D scene. And you're going to press cross selection. And what this does is it paints, it cuts your model in half. Well, it doesn't really cut your model in half. If you uncheck it, you'll see that it your model pops right back. But it allows you to render only half of it at the center line. So you can paint blissfully and even all, like, all over here without getting those ugly um, error lines that we mentioned earlier. Uh, if you want to change where the cut is going, the cross selection is, you can just pick on the offset button and rotate it around to wherever you like. But for the, to tilt it this way, um, you can even tilt it that way if you want, and get into those hard to reach places. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to stay right in the middle if I didn't crash Photoshop just now doing that. Hey, you step back. There we go. Um, if the plane, the cutting off plane thingy here, I'm going to change this red so you can see what I'm talking about. If that is bothering you and you can't stand and look at it, you can also uncheck this box and it'll go away. The effect is still there, but you know, um, it won't, the visual representation of it won't be. You can also take this um, to this section to look inside of your snaggle. 
So if you wanted to make sure you were painting the butt and everything else around the butt, you can use that and then paint inside of it. That helps when um, you're painting the tail and then you notice there's some of the original color peeking through causing weird seam line thingies. You can just use the cross selector and then paint all in there and that helps it as well. So now you're just free to mention the basics. You're free to just color about. I'm going to pause it real quick and then do some quick drawing and show you something that you can that can be done. Actually, I think I might just go on Second Life and show you the one that I already uploaded. It'll save me so much time rather than creating something totally new. So hang on one second. So this is the snaggle that I made during the practice run using the symmetrical one. As you can see, everything is all symmetrical and pretty on here, drawn. But you can see some of the seams and stuff, but that was done because I was experimenting with different types of shading. I'm not the greatest skin there or anything creator, but, you know, it's still fun to play around with. I should give this out as a freebie if you guys want to be a space milk snaggy. <laughs> Alright, so let's dive back into the tutorial. I realized that I actually need to paint this so that I can show you a few uh, tips and tricks to help you get out of some error situations. So let's go back into Photoshop and I'll show you what I mean by that. Okay, so one thing I forgot to tell you is some little time saving tricks. Um, the Space Milk one was actually based after Midna here. I just, you know, um, realized that the snaggle was symmetrical halfway through the t painting of it and it became something else. So during that time I learned a few tips and I'm going to pass on to you. So let's say you want to make the base color here with this blue color. So I'm going to click on the blue and I'm going to double click on the color down here and add to my swatches. That way whenever um, I try to paint this again I don't have to keep using the eyedropper tool and go on this color, then I switch over there, then I go here and go there, go back and forth. Now I can just pick it from the swatches, which should be visible when do swatches. Alright, so when we go down here, you'll see that my midnight color is saved. I'm going to do the same thing for her darker parts and her twilight glowy turquoise. So those three colors make up midnight. Now I want to create this skin color. I don't want it white. I want it all blue like Mitna. So instead of going over here and painting the whole thing blue like this, you can click the new body layer. Oops. That's new lashes. The main body layer and just paint bucket the whole thing. So paint bucket and make it blue. <laughs> That's kind of gross. I'm just going to delete this layer and make it all blue. And then we're going to play with the blending until it matches the color of blue that I want. It should be about there. Now one thing that we're going to definitely have to do is clean off the teeth because you don't want unless that's your goal but you don't really want the gums and the vagina and the nipples to all be that same blue it really is a pain in the butt to correct that and it just looks really cheap unless that is what you're going for you know not cheap but frosty or something like that but you guys know what I mean sorry so I'm going to use the polygon tool and just select the outline of the teeth and I actually think there's an easier way to select it so I'm just going to deselect this, go back to the base layer, use the magic select tool and select it and then go back up to the top layer and just remove all of that blue because we don't need it. Do something. Maybe go here, go there. Alright. So that got rid of that and this not even sure what that is, but I know it's supposed to be blue. So 
That too. And then we do the same thing with the tongue. Oops. Too soft. Just like that, uh, your tongue goes. There we go. I think that's how the parts. Oh, nope, nope, vagina. And nipples. Unless your nipples are supposed to be blue, then. Otherwise, you know, clean it up. Now, you want to use this as the mask. I'm pretty sure you can like duplicate layer and we lock this down. Shoot, shoot. And that way, when we go to erase everything, yeah, yeah I'm curious about this actually. Give me one second. Close this. Save it. Hmm. You see, we can paint on it without it hurting the nipples. Success. Change texture. I really didn't learn masking in Photoshop yet. This is just me testing out new theories. Alright, so I'm going to go here and then try painting again. So now that we have our blue in here. I'm going to make the, this smaller for one, and then we're going to go to our mid mid dark and start painting in the marks to make a pillow. You know, if we actually wanted to, we can actually put her nipples and vagina in a different layer. So let's go over to that main body real quick. I'm sorry, this is getting too complicated. So I'm going to select the base layer and I'm going to select, select on. What did I do the last time I tried this? Um, you select all, like this, and it selects everything but the teeth. Mm. And the teeth out, and the blue, blue.
now those are all on a separate layer. So we don't need this anymore. We can paint on without word. <laughs> Alright, so let's go back to painting. I'm going to add the paint in until I get to the part where I wanted to show you the arrows. So give me one second, get right there. Okay, so now we have a majority of our snaggle um, painted black. And as you can see, there are a couple seams or errors showing up inside of, you know, the painting. Sometimes the brush doesn't get into all the cracks, so you have to go over to the 2D. You can try going over it one more time in the 3D menu. Sometimes that works. And you can just rotate it ever so slightly and it will give you a new angle that you weren't in before that lets you get that crack but sometimes it's more efficient to just go into 2D um, paint and grab it so I'm going to turn off the cross selection um, the cross cutter I'm going to run the brush across it and as you can see I'm not getting um, that crack right here that I want to attack so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a brand new color that goes totally total color unrelated to my project. I'm going to choose this uh, bright magenta and I'm going to run it across where I get the arrows at. So it's right here, all up the back, right there. Now you can do this on a smaller scale if you don't want to mess up your pattern, but I'm just doing this for effect. So I'm going to do it there, there, and right there on that cheek. So right here. Now we're going to go over into the main body material and you're going to look for all the places that have the red, uh, the magenta. So I'm just going to pick our mint and color back, I think it was this one, and I'm going to run this over and spilling into the X, like I don't want to go back up to the top. So, so then, okay, so what's causing the error is, Okay, so what's causing the seams to come in is this color off spill right here. When we're painting, we're painting all the stuff that's visible like this, but we're not getting into the small crack that is this right here. So these little peaks are showing through. So what you're going to want to do is grab your paintbrush and paint the overflow coloring thingy right here. Also, cover up all those bright pink marks that you made. You can also do that on a different layer so you're not ruining the work that you did. But, you know, since it's all black right here, there's not really that much loss. So I'm just going to do this all along the tail to make sure I get everything. All here. And I'm going to be careful around this part because the chest connects somewhat slightly there. So you're going to be careful around here. Yeah, that's awesome for mouse work, don't you think? Funny fact, the day I decided to do this tutorial, my graphics tablet broke. So all this is being done by mouse. Where it could have been elegantly done by tablet. So huzzah to Murphy's Law. So I'm going to color the overflow just to be safe on this side as well. All the way here. I think this is around the head. The head right. Right here. Scroll up and do the same thing. So fit screen. Same around the arm. My leg, I'm gonna get off that part of the texture that didn't paint here. Flashing, as I like to call it. I'm gonna just color all this black because that's what this is. Mid neck color. Color toes. And that too. Just get all that extra flashing. Make it nice and smooth. That's supposed to be black too. And that 
Oh, <laughs> I forgot the big chunk of her back that's right there. Alright, so we'll make that black, and I'm not sure what that is. Yeah, I like that. But if it's messed up, we'll fix it later. Alright, so all of that is colored in. Color that line here. And we can even get down in here. Clear that up. And uh, if we messed up, hey, that's why we got the eraser. So we're going to save this. Yes. And go over here. Uh, I guess I left some pink somewhere. I'm just going to color that in. Let's go back to the main guy real quick. Where the hell is that it? Hmm. It must be on that inner butt, it seems to go inside there and go back and all that out. Uh, it's always a pain in it, right? <laughs> I guess this is why I, I wouldn't... I would probably... I probably should have did a tail version and a non-tail one at the same time which is what you could do if your computer's strong enough for it if only i didn't close ugh blender <laughs> i could have showed you that one but for the most part there it is all right so that's how you clean up a few artifacts that may happen or seam lines now you should know that when you import it into Second Life, it's not going to be this shiny of how a spec map, a specular map, I think is the proper word for it, or a shiny map. Photoshop always makes everything you import in here shiny for some reason. You can turn it off, but I forgot how to turn it off. Alright, so we have it, a face, oof, um, not quite painted all the way. Looking around here. Looking okay, down here and make it a nice clean transition. Let's see. I'm sorry, this is going on too long. Once you get in the swing of it, you'll be done in like 10 minutes. And of course, I put this in the format that Sony Vegas doesn't like, so I can't even edit it and make it, like, speed it up or anything. So I'm so sorry to have to sit through this. But, there we go. I'm paint all that on. Some new lashes there. Just gonna make it all black. And we're gonna go to the eye around here. So then Color all that up, but smooth out the flashing. That white little residue that you see there, it will show up later and it just looks icky. So I'm gonna do that. And I'm gonna paint it here. There we go. A little more. Getting that overflow. This is, you don't have to worry about any seams. Alright, so that is our make coloring. I'm going to create a new layer and then do on the shiny twilight dotty thingies. Now here you can just, you know, get wild and do whatever you want. There's no right or wrong way to do a twilight one, a uh, twilight skin. I'm going to go back to my custom shape, my custom position. So I'm on the front again. Uh, we already have our new layer, so I'm just going to select the Twilight Glow. 
and here you can just you know get wild and write put on whatever dots you like so you can talk across because i like to see it in action so And I got some on the tail back there. So build that. Um, I guess I can't do this and paint at the same time. So I'm just gonna go back here. It's going to be all on this leg. You know, I wonder if I saved my other one. So I'm going to go over and import that in. Let's see, the chest. Oh, this is going to blow up my computer. These are the markings from the first one that I did. So I'm going to go to my body and select all my markings here. Select all and copy. Close that. Cut this, delete that, press play, and then paste. Yay! Work it, baking the cake in advance. <laughs> so here's the twilight, the twilight marks I made before. Now, as you see, they're not glowing like the other one was, and that is because I didn't add in uh, my layer effects. So I'm just gonna clean this up a little bit before I do that. Yeah, all right, I guess that's it. No idea what I was going for. All right, so we have our this, and I'm going to make some fake glow. I'm going to zoom in here and fix this nipple real quick. Now the whole thing needs fixing. Alright. Alright. Now that's done. So we have this done. And we're going to right click on it. Our layer. And go into blended options. And this gives you a slew of other effects you can add to it. Uh, to make it glow. I use the outer glow. And I change the color. To a, a nice bright complementary color to it, like this light blue, and I changed the blending mode to something a lot brighter, like maybe linear dodge add. And then I did an internal glow, which is my fake shading. I just select the color here, make it OK, do a multiply, um, let's make the size go inside, like extrude inside, so it does all the shading that I need for it. It can choke the color and gives it some more wackier effects. So it's really a matter of you playing with it to get the uh, uh, look you like. So now that we have our snaggy texture. I'm going to save it as I like to use it as a JPEG, just in case I got any accidental transparencies in here, which you really shouldn't. But rather safe than sorry. So as a JPEG, and it's going to quality all the way up to maximum, and hit OK. Although, you can also do as a pin if you feel like you get better quality out of it. So I'm going to go find my uh, snaggle paint and I'm going to save this as a pin and hit okie doke.
Okay, so we have our snaggle tooth texture, and I'm going to go into Second Life. Yay, Second Life. And I'm going to upload. Um, so I used to pick in bulk my snaggle tooth thing. So it was like seven JPEGs and a pen. Oops, thank you. It's uploading. Alright, so what we're going to do now is add it to the HUD. I'm going to change my body texture so you can see it work. Go back to being a regular peach dragon. Um, then we go to add text and it gives you this dialog box that says which one you want. Um, I use body because it includes the tail and the mole. So body and if you want to just make it for the male, you just do one line. If you want for females, you have to do it twice. So I want this texture to go on both my flat chest and all my bosoms. So I'm going to select the texture, right click on it, copy asset ID UID, and it goes to your clipboard. So just minimize that. And I'm going to type in oh, control V, paste it in, and hit enter, and then do it again and then press send. So it should add it. I, I did this a couple times before I got it right. The latest one, that's the first one I did. This is the new one that I did. So as you see, I have my snaggle um, added in. Of course, yeah, it needs some work and it has the <laughs> lady bits part. Just you know, add your lady bits so that it actually looks right. I'm sure that can be painted a lot better than what it is. Um, so using that gives you this effect. And if I actually took better care when I was painting, I probably would have got a better um, effect. Now if you want to, here is another tip. So I'm going to this. Remember the basic white that we have down here on normal? We're going to put this texture to work and drag it up to the top and overlay and hit multiply and what's the better one let's see just shuffle through until it looks right this will give you all that beautiful snaggle shit and that gordon did pretty much <laughs> swiping the work he did and giving your snaggy a little more depth something maybe multiply on top of it might give it a little bit of... mm. let's test yeah it's going to okay so let's see this one try it out so uh, upload the image so two. UID, copy, close, uh, text, body, you know when I was doing this I should have asked them how do you remove <laughs> all the textures you put in here. I think that might be the one that's darker. Mm. It's all a matter of experimenting, I suppose. Okay, now here's my song for you. Yeah, that's right. Whoops, sorry. I've been playing Rhythm Heaven so much that every time I hear I suppose I start singing that song. So as you see, it's a little more detailed than the first one. Oops, do there is this one. This is the flat one, and this is the one with the texture overlaid. It. Uh, we can try a different type of blender. Maybe wow, that's just bright. Hmm, 
What's the better one? Overlay would be it, I guess. But I wonder if that's any different than what we have now. Alright, let's try it out. So let's try this one. Oh wait, no, I forgot. This isn't Second Life. <laughs> That's not a, a regular avatar. Uh, let's copy the UUID. Close it. Add it. Body, paste, paste, send. Well, my nip <laughs> nipples are definitely there. So, yeah, you can see that it is possible to do it. It's just, um, you gotta see which effect works for you. I think I like the way the one I did the first time. This one is the prettiest. So that's how you texture. That's how you make a skin texture for your Snaggle 2 Cobalt. As obviously I need to clean it up and do a little more, but I figured this has gone on long enough that you got the gist of it. So yeah, I hope this helped out with you. If you think I should redo this or try again let me know and I'll see what I can do about making a prettier uh, snaggle for your enjoyment. Oops, thank god I'm gone and broke that one. So that right here. I don't know, this one's prettier. So you see this one came out better than the other one. I think. I suppose. <laughs> alright, alright. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Sorry this went on for so long. I hope it helped. This is how you make skins for the snaggles and good luck on your projects. Yeah.